Nehru has been active in the education, education space, both here in this area and more broadly. Um, she's also a board member of Donors Choose, which the little Google uh, connection is that this year we gave to the majority of our customers our, our Christmas Hanukkah holiday gifts were Donors Choose gift certificates. Um, it's a fabulous program. If you don't know about it, go look it up. And we've seen uh, tremendous um, thanks from our advertisers for introducing them to something so important. And Morgan Paul is the president of CK12, so he's running this noble effort, a role he assumed after a long career in technology, um, both stints as a CTO and as an entrepreneur in residence at Kleiner Perkins. So I guess it's not too hard to figure out how, how this group met each other. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet with Nehru and Morgan on this, on this interest and this organization. And they're doing something really important, we believe, and certainly very core to what Google believes is important which trying to take information which has been costly to develop and costly to deliver, information that's important to people, and this is educational information for grades 5 through 12, and use the power of, of what is humanity uh, to create this in a much more open way. So I'm going to let them talk to you about this initiative, and we thank them for joining us. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, Morgan and Nehru are doing most of the work, so they should be talking. But I'll introduce it and then hand it over to them. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. This is a new effort. Uh, I think uh, all of us know about textbooks 1.0. Uh, many of you have seen them. Rigid, heavy, monolithic textbooks. Uh, I'm sure you've seen them. Uh, very little of the money from these goes to authors. Most of it goes to production of stuff that's uh, not used. And most importantly, they're relatively inflexible in adapting to a class or a student or a course curriculum that a teacher wants. Um, what we need, really, is the model of iTunes or iChapters. Uh, but even before going that, one of the key stories behind starting this is uh, a conversation we had with uh, Rich Baronic, who started Connections, which is trying to do the same thing for, uh, for college courses. Rich had a set of class notes that he used to hand out till Barnes & Noble took over the Rice University bookstore. And suddenly, photocopies of his class notes cost $120. Um, that is the problem with textbooks. And, and so open source textbooks uh, was an idea that was born then. Um, let's see. How are we doing? I, I don't have to say much about the open source movement here. But all of you know much about this, about the peer review models, the meritocracy models, and the participation. Um, the, the model in open source is you start with something that good, that's good enough, and it gets better. And most importantly, it keeps getting better. And as, as you know, there's very few products as good as Apache and Linux today, mostly because of this participation and continuous and continual improvement. Um, the second phenomena we've seen recently, and um, here everybody's seen it on uh, lots of different uh, forums, uh, is user-generated content. Uh, I don't think, again, it's something new or different We'll talk about how this gets supplied to textbooks and textbooks uh, 2.0. Uh, you know, it's uh, Walter Isaacson, who used to be editor of Time magazine, had a debate with me probably or he, only about three years ago, where he said, uh, I can't rely on the content on the net. I have to go to CNN. And uh, I argued that CNN was never going to be current and have enough information. Uh, this is another manifestation. Clearly today, YouTube's at least as much reach as CNN. 
um, in, in why the old models are dying. Uh, CNN, in fact, has succumbed to this, and now CNN I reports trying to use user-generated content. Um, beyond user-generated content is all the knowledge portals um, moving up the chain. It started with source code to journalism and reporting and to knowledge portals. In fact, uh, uh, all of us know about Wikipedia and the comparisons between Wikipedia and Encyclopedia Britannica. What's most uh, impressive to me is how much more dynamic uh, Wikipedia is for almost any topic, no matter how esoteric. It's the only place you can get information almost instantaneously. Uh, on, on portals like WikiHow, uh, you can even learn how to scramble eggs in a microwave. There's sort of every topic is covered. Um, so the, the new set of things around what, uh, uh, what is starting to happen is the Creative Commons l l license um, and its application into open educational resources, which is what CK12 is all about. There are successful examples. I've talked about connections. Uh, that's out of Rice University for, co for college curriculum, MIT Open Courseware, and others. Um, uh, so, what we need is the iTunes model in course curriculum. And you have to really look at it from the student's point of view and the teacher's point of view. Because very seldom is a whole textbook taught. If albums are broken down into songs, we should be breaking books down into chapters or maybe even smaller modules. And we shouldn't have to pay uh, for all the things we don't need. But even more importantly, as we've seen with music, it's rip, mix, and burn. I sort of call this gen generation of kids the, the, the mixed generation. I mean, they can't imagine music any other way. And I don't see why education shouldn't be the same way. Um, and, and I'll talk about some of these pressing needs. Um, the next step, and technology enables more and more over time, is this idea of print on demand. You know. McGraw-Hill has McGraw-Hill here, McGraw-Hill Singapore, and a different Tata McGraw-Hill in India because they have an old model. What we need is this print-on-demand model, print only what you need if you need to print it at all. Um, not only that is you start to think about it. Once you get into this model, you start to get a level of flexibility uh, that's very hard to imagine. So if you look what textbook 2.0 would be like, a teacher's teaching a class of 50 students or 30 students in a physics course. You know, I want, if I'm an A student, really detailed textbook. If I'm a C student, I really want pictorials in physics. And that level of customization is not possible. So today, everybody gets taught at one level with one textbook. You know, problem 5.2 could be different for different students at different levels. And that level of customization is the next level beyond just sort of printing just the chapters or modules you want. Uh, that's what textbook 2.0 is about. It's about rip, mix, burn, rate, share. It's about Wikipedia and iTunes and Blurb and Netflix and MySpace and everything we've learned in each of those models combined for education. Um, and, and of course, it's disintermediation leading to disruption. I have to tell you a funny story. It was a few years ago, I was asked by one of the large media company CEOs to come give a talk on the internet to their 
off-site senior staff meeting. And I was thinking of something creative to say because I don't want to repeat what everybody else has said. Um, so I, I, I took the example of open source textbooks and I said, this is why I think textbook, I knew they had a textbook publishing business, uh, would go out of business. And the CEO of the textbook business got up and said to me, you mean you're really going to obsolete us? Can this really happen? And I knew from how concerned she was that it actually can happen. Um, so that's where the idea was born. It's flexible, it's customized, it's improving, it's locally oriented, and probably most importantly, once you have a lot of content, you can filter it to local standards. So it should be easy for a California teacher to meet all the physics curriculum requirements to California curriculum standards. So these are just filters layered on top of the content. In some ways, this is different than Wikipedia. It's not completely open source because it has to meet certain curricular standards. Uh, but it's, it's relatively simple to do with technology. And, and that's where this idea of textbooks 2.0 was born, what it, uh, how it got defined. So the CK12 vision, and I'll pass it on to Morgan here very quickly, is a collaborative environment, free and open. It's a nonprofit. It's aligned with curriculum. It has to meet state curriculum standards. And you can do textbooks that are much better than what the state wants, but they won't be used. You have to meet curriculum standards. It's customized, of course. So I won't, uh, hmm, at the bottom of the font's getting cut off, but you get the idea. Um, so that is, in fact, the, the vision of CK12. Um, let me talk very briefly about the goals or uh, um, it's very simple. Flexible textbooks that meet minimum quality standards. And there, uh, the process here is more complex that you might see on Wikipedia because there is a level of standards and review that is needed to meet state standards. Uh, so not everything is the same, but there's a lot of leverage from the models. It's, of course, shared con content, reallocating resources. You know, just in California alone, every year we spend $600 million on textbooks for K through 12. That's funding that could be freed up, and it's billions and billions of dollars nationwide that could be feed up while making the content better and more accessible and more customizable. That's really the power of the vision here. Less money, lot more utility, lot better textbooks. Initially, they probably need to match what's available from commercial publishers, but over time, they will get substantially better. They will get substantially more diverse so a C student and an A student can read different things to explain the same subject matter and the same curriculum requirement, and they'll be slightly different in California versus Texas to meet local standards. At this point, let me uh, ask Morgan to come up and go into a little more of the details. Thank you, Vinod. So let's actually jump into it. You know, what are our plan of action? So currently, you know, we are focusing on two main things as actually, as you see, technology is an enabler for many of these things. And we are, you know, focusing on technology and also we are focusing on seeding the contents in order to bring back and showcase to the people that actually there are good contents that can be delivered. There are books that are much more qualified than what is available today in the industry. Actually, we brought those books here, so if you want to actually see how this printed books, the customized printed books, how they tangibly look and feel, and this is not much different from you know, uh, any other standard book that you would go buy. Today, a fifth grade science book costs around $80. And if you see the definition of relative humidity in it, it's, much be it's not better than what you would find it in an you know, open educational resource website. Okay? So what we are focusing on is that, and also this is a K through 12 audience. 
So we wanted to make sure the collaboration happens in a very open way, just like in a wiki. And then the application has to be as simple as like an email editor, because the K through 12 audience is not going to be very much, uh, you know, they do not have time and energy to catch up with, you know, uh, advanced interfaces and those kind of stuff. And also the whole thing needs to be manifested in different formats. Actually, you would see uh, we, will, we will talk about different levels of manifestation, so that means XML type extensibility needs to be underneath. So if you are going to see the underneath substrate, they are going to be in XML. So how do we deal with from a content side? We actually, you know, we, we farm, we harvest, we hunt. So that means we go keep looking for contents. People actually come and donate contents to us, as well as we also, you know, commission authors. For example, you know, what we have done is that Today in high schools, you know, all the, you know, industry uh, standard publishers, nobody focuses on new materials, but technology has been changing. The world has been changing. So still today, you know, even in United States, there is no standard beginning engineering book to teach in high schools. So we commissioned, you know, people to actually, we paid money for it to seed that content. We have brought out a classic, you know, 9th to 12th grade usable engineering book. What are the basics of engineering? Software engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, all of them together. And at the center of this is actually the quality of that entire book needs to be guaranteed. So we are designing a collaborative environment, a platform for people to come back and then actually, you know, uh, log into our system. Like, like this kind of a home page. And, you know, then they can actually browse the system. You know, basically here is a book on human biology. We, here is a flex book on human biology that you can log in. And this whole book was assembled from Wikipedia. I will show you dynamically how you could do that. Okay. And then you can actually publish a book in the sense you can actually go into the system. Here is a screenshot where you can say, okay, I want this book to be the pictures laid out on the right-hand column, and then you, you can have a layout wizard on the fly, you know, within this dynamic environment, and also you can, you know, uh, preview that content, and then you, such that it can be sent to the, you know, on-demand printer, and that particular book can be endorsed. So a, a state school system administrator can come back and say, oh, this particular set of collection of materials in a logically collected fashion, just like a playlist, you know, meets the demand for or the standards for California state government. So thereafter, it can be endorsed and locked. And also, you know, people can actually come back and then take an existing chapter and then go through this. So you can see a Google Web Toolkit here, you know, the... the, the um, fingerprint of that. So basically they can pick their own uh, chapter and then they can adapt and then edit it. And then they can keep a new version of that chapter for their own environment. So now not only that, you know, you, you took an existing book, you can also adapt it to your custom needs. For example, if you want to teach in a sixth grader or a fifth grader about area and perimeter, the best way to teach about area and perimeter is about, you know, if you want to draw, you know, sidelines of a soccer field, that's a perimeter. Then you can teach it in an applied way. You can create your own set of problems. So you, we will also provide an, an environment for you to adapt the system and then publish it back to. So this is the life cycle that you would see. Okay. Now, what are the architectural principles of this particular system? Okay, what happened in iTunes model is they took the album and then broke it into two, you know, uh, individual songs. So now you have to decompose a book into elemental structures. Okay, then the next thing is that you know we should allow open authoring as well as closed authoring. Closed authoring is that you know very sequential. You go and then edit your book in a, in a Microsoft Word or a Google Doc and then you you share it with others. But during that editing process, you are not sharing with. Whereas in a wiki you know, you should be able to do it in a very open way. And adaptive versioning. So, for example, you know, typically the, the standard book publishers, what they do is like they, main, they, they write one main book and then they give it to State of New York, they give it to State of California and then adapt the same book for different versions. And that's how, you know, you, this is almost like your source code, you know, subversion branching. You know, when there is a main release and then you make a, a, you know, main trunk, you can actually branch and then version it and then diff and merge it. So this particular system should, you know, also support that kind of a feature set. Then contextual collation. For example, if you, if you want to actually create a custom book, 
on laser physics and spectrometry, you also want to make sure the prerequisites for that, the basic rules of optics, the basic rules of reflection, the basic rules of refraction is also collated within the same book. So that is also called, we call it as contextual collation. Then eventually flexible manifestation, you know, I mean we know that paper print is not going away and we all know that tangibly that we still look into paper. At the same time, you know, some of us want to read it on our mobile devices, some of us want to actually get a USB image. So you pop it into your parents' machine and that machine becomes your book right now and then you, you know, remove your USB stick and that's not, you know, that you become, becomes your parents' computer. So you should be able to manifest the, these materials in many other formats. So let's look at the elemental structures. How do we, you know, decompose a book? So basically, first of all, the, the basic element of the system is, you know, URL or the URIs, you know. So it's like it could be image, it could be a media object, it could be an audio object, okay, and it has certain semantics associated with it. The next thing is we call it as an element, which is a collection of, okay, um, actually I'll show you a detailed example of an element. So here is a, you know, whatever that is enclosed in boxes, we call them as elements. So a book can have a, a flowing text and then boxes embedded in it. And these boxes we call it as logical elements. You know, think of your div, div structure in HTML construct, right? So it, it can be a combination of uh, text and, you know, for images and then other media binary objects, okay? Okay, the next thing is, you know, a chapter. As you know, you know, any book in any chapter is a collection of, you know, what, how we define this as, you know, a, a chapter has a title and then a, a conceptual definition and then overview of that particular topic and then bunch of elements embedded in it and then a question and review and those check your understanding section, that kind of stuff. That's a chapter as in any other book. And then eventually a flex book which is a collection of a chapter. Okay, so you know this is how you know this is nothing but your table of content. So this is how the, we basically break down a book into four major entities. And the next piece is the open authoring. So how someone can actually use an email editor, a word processor, a wiki interface in order to collaborate with our system, and how this system can support branch versioning as well as main trunk versioning and also how this can manifest into HTML or, a, or a RSS feeds. See, for example, someone can, should be able to get their book as an RSS feed. Why not, right? So uh, going back to the same thing on the manifestation, this is how we transcribe or we translate or we you know, um, evolve our contents from one form of another. This you will actually see in action. I will show it to you. you know, right now we can support HTML as well as PDF. But in future, we will also support a USB image thing. So the entire book will be in a USB image, as well as, as an RSS feeds. We call it as flex feeds, you know. So right now, you know, as I said, we also harvest contents, you know. I mean, you know, Google crawls, but we harvest. So in the sense, you know, you go into, you know, we go into Wikipedia or any open educational resource site, which actually is compatible with our license. So our license is creative commons share alike and by attribution. So we, whoever complies with that license, we can actually go into that particular website and bring the content online and then, you know, inline into your own book. I'll show it in, uh, you know, actually, let me actually show the demo. So, okay, here is our home page. Oops. Okay, hang on. Okay. So here is our home page. Uh, right now, um, you know, we are going to go into a limited beta on January 28th, so anyone who wants to participate, let us know. And this is our application homepage. It completely runs on Amazon's, you know, Elastic Computing Cloud EC2 infrastructure. And I'll show you, you know, before, you know, rather than keep talking, you know, you can actually go and then create your own book, or you can actually see one standard book. For example, we, we told about the ASU engineering book that, you know, we commissioned to write, it's here. So let me show you this particular book, okay? While that's popping up, let me actually go into Google. And, you know, here, I'm going to search for, um, yeah, People's Physics book. 
So here is the book that, you know, a couple of, you know, uh, authors, you know, their names are James Dan, and they have written this whole book for ninth to 12th grade physics, and they have put it already outside, and it's, it's a donated content to our environment, but they have written this book. These, many kinds of these books already exist in the environment today. So this is the book, you know, each one of them are actually in a monolithic, you know, PDF chapter environment, okay? Whereas what we have taken is that that particular book now is actually, you know, broken down into kind of an iTunes, and then you see this is like your iTunes interface for Flexbooks. So that's what you have, okay? Now, in this environment, I'm actually going to create a new book in front of you. So assume that we are going to create a book on light, magnetism, and electricity, okay? So you can actually... Um, be able to um, search for light, okay, and then you see the chapters, and you should be able to, you know, preview that particular chapter, and assume that this is the chapter you want, you simply drag and drop that particular chapter into your book, okay, same thing, now I want to have magnet, so here is a chapter on magnetism, and then I want to have a chapter on electricity. Okay, so I've gotten three chapters, okay? At the same time, assume that, you know, this particular student is a fast learning student. And assume that we want to give them, you know, additional topics, advanced topics, like reflection, total internal reflection, dispersion, just on the optics light chapter. But this particular book, you know, for ninth grade, it's not going to have it. So how can I get and then, you know, incentivize that particular student to get that additional materials, right? So, you know, what we will do is like search for, you know, reflection. But only thing is we are not going to just search in CK12. Now we are going to, you know, dynamically search in Wikipedia. Okay, I turn that particular flag on and now, you know, I go into Wikipedia. Now I see the reflection. So I, let me actually click on it. You can see the preview of that, as is in, in, in Wikipedia, okay? And now, dynamically, I can get that chapter online into my book, okay? Now, next thing is, you know, I want total internal reflection. So, now, I, I want that particular book, okay? Now, same thing, you know, dispersion. Okay, now I have collected my book, but only thing is that I want to, you know, also I can resequence these chapters, you know, like this, drag and drop, so now I can create my own sequence. Okay, so far I have not even logged into the system, and as, I, as you know, any user is not going to give their credentials until you prove your worth. So you are not even required to register into the system, you are not even required to log into the system. Right now I can completely generate this book online and I'm going to do that right now. So all I click is this PDF button. Now it's going to actually, you know, generate that book in PDF. While that's generating, I can show you, uh, you know, other books that we have already done that, you know, here are some, you know, uh, p p PDF, you know, books that, you know, let it download while this is coming back, okay? Okay. So I do a page down on this. So the whole chapters, everything is there. So these are custom-made books, okay? The whole book is available online. Likewise, if you, if you actually, when the other PDF generation comes back, you should be able to see it not only took the, you know, contents from the CK12 repository, it also dynamically went and harvested the contents, the open educational contents from Wikipedia, and it will collate all of them together, it will create pagination in, in sequence, and such that the appendices, the indices, and then glossary, they can all be collated together. So here it is, right? So, you know, we didn't save the name of the thing, so that's why it's just called, you know, untitled Flexbook, but you can always, uh, you know, give a name to it, add meta tags to it, and then you can share it with your friends, okay? So let me actually go back and then, you know, let me do a page down on this. Oh, this also, okay. okay, if you really look at this, here are the paginations. You know, the light is from CK12, the dispersion is from Wikipedia, and they were all, you know, collated together. 
So let us go into the light chapter. So let me actually put it in a you know page preview mode, okay, such that you can get the whole thing. So here is the dispersion from you know Wikipedia. And then here is the magnetism from CK12. And then reflection from Wikipedia. So you, you got the point, right? So now I can create, I mean, if you want a book on thermodynamics, I can go create on the fly. You know, refrigeration, you know, heat engines, you know, same thing. A book on biology, you can do it. So if an 11th grader comes in, you do not have to go to, you know, Barnes and Nobles. Again, you can always say that Wikipedia content is still not vetted out, but it's good enough. But, you know, this is an enabler. And, you know, when, when people get involved, you are going to get more and more content. Okay, let me actually jump back to the presentation. Okay, so this is what you saw it in action. Okay, and um, how can you take part in it? You know, we need help. Okay, we are, we are, it's very tough hiring people. And then, you know, all these things we managed with, you know, almost like three engineers over the period of last five to six months. You know, we need help. And, you know, anybody who you can refer, anybody who wants to come on sabbatical, anybody who wants to, you know, talk to us, there are lots of good stuff. Even, you know, this is open source, you know, it's one brick at a time, right? You do one single thing, you know, even if you do have, come and, you know, create your own book, that's perfectly all right, right? Actually, if I log in, you can create your own my library type of books and then save it. So we will take questions. I'll also request Vinod to come in to take questions. Okay, go ahead. Reactions around testing and um, you know typically advanced students. That's an early indication that maybe we should push them ahead, let them skip a grade, whatever. Now we're giving them the flexibility to actually customize curriculums to students of varying levels of capability within the class. So how it's a it sounds like a lot of work for the teachers, and b um, how do they get around the testing? aspect and kind of the standardized sort of metrics. And so I, I think this is where open source knowledge comes in. Yeah. You know, most teachers do lesson plans. Well, those become, those can be contributed to the library. So there is lots of supplementary material which will have to be developed for each of these textbooks. And I suspect teachers will be doing that. But it becomes easier and easier for any one teacher because other teachers are doing it and contributing it. So uh, um, Niru may be able to comment on it, but clearly supplementary material for classrooms will have to be developed. Once you have the textbooks and they're free and much more accessible, you'll start to see that show up. Uh, it's the same question that was asked about Wikipedia or Linux. And, you know, Linux was a little kernel. It was useful. Uh, and it's amazing what it has grown up to be. So the model is the same. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we made very clear from the beginning was that we were not going to tell teachers how to teach or what to do. We were actually going to take one part of the problem in education and try and solve that. And, and I think you know, paying $600 million dollars in in California, when we're struggling with balancing, you know, budget, and we start cutting education again, um, you know, this kind of system can help take away one, one that problem. Number two, it actually can help the teacher help in a classroom of 18 to 20 or whatever number of students there will be now. Um, you know, help those students. A teacher can, you know, help them keep their pace. Right, so if you can help a student who's not doing well on standardized tests, we are not going to help them do standardized tests yet. That may come in the future, but at this point, we're not going to help them. So if they want to uh, do something towards standardized test, they can start with taking differentiated instruction, differentiated content, so each child can learn at the rate that they can learn at. And that we can help with very easily by having them customize the content for each, each kid. It's, it's almost like a Montessori model. 
Well, no, I think, I, I, I think the important thing to remember is this is not trying to solve the education problem. That's just too big and too, too large a problem with many dimensions. It's trying to take one piece of it. People use textbooks. Here's a better way to do textbooks. It's not trying to say we teach it wrong or we have the wrong standards. It, it, one should define the problem narrowly and say it's tackling this problem, not every other problem. Yeah, I mean, see, primarily you look at economical benefit, and then there is also some sort of emotional benefit. I, we, I'll talk about that, as well as evolutionary, too. Economical is that, obviously, your price point comes down. For example, the James Dan book is actually already adopted in six you know, high schools in California. Only thing is that they do not have ability to manifest it. They do not see it. You know, right now they have to go to Kinko's or keep it as a paper print. Whereas this gives you a hard bound, color printed, polished paper print book, okay, at a very low cost, at a print cost, right? So that's a you know economical uh, difference. Here are the books. Actually, you should be able to see yeah, it. it. The second it, thing is it, that it looks just like a textbook, right? Um, it's still not hard bound. By the way, if we could actually do the hard bound, here are other books. Actually, you know, feel it. Actually, you, you can. The other thing is that the, the emotional benefit is, here's the emotional benefit. You said you're a parent, okay? How much your kid is carrying? What grade is your... Uh... Oh, she's a preschooler, but, you know, I, I, I think this would be really interesting. As a, as a parent, I would love to create workbooks for my child. Yes. But, you know, particularly in California and in the Bay Area, everything is so competitive, so you're always interested in getting your children to the top of the class and getting them into the best schools and getting them into the right universities, right? So it, it, as a parent, I'd be saying, well, is my child having the most advanced flexible? Is my child, you know, is she getting the benefit? Is she, where is she in the scale? Actually, let's talk about, you know, you, 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 no, even a, you know, a pre-endorsed standard book, you do not have to carry it, you know, as a big luggage, okay? Right now, I buy you know books for my sixth grader son, an additional set of books such that he does not have to lug books around, and they are like eighty dollars, ninety dollars, right? So that that is that is an emotional benefit, and then the th fi finally, as we know, mentioned, it's evolutionary, in the sense you know this is the beginning point, right? See, if you t really take a textbook, there are multiple things, okay? You know, standards, curriculum, and then actual materials, then lesson plan. And then, then actually the teaching materials, then, you know, pacing the teachers to teach it within that particular, uh, uh, you know, fiscal year, then, you know, assessment, and then, you know, figuring out how do we figure out, you know, whichever the weakness it is, how do I actually, you know, uh, uh, reinforce, all those things comes into, but this is a beginning point. In the sense, if you want freedom, if you are the last mile delivery teacher, so going back to teachers, we have run focus group studies. Teachers say, you know, you know, we do not have time, obviously. You know, they do not want to go do the research. But, you know, if there are, you know, like 40 teachers in an elementary school. Even if one teacher assembles one thing, that's much more shareable across. They are very much happy about that. Yes, go ahead. Who are the early adopters of this? So, right now, you know, we are focusing on California pilot. And we are talking to, you know, charter schools and private schools as well as, you know, public schools in specific targeted demographies. There are, there are schools that have pain points. Actually, after leaving from here, we are going to go to a, you know, public or a private school? It's a private school. Private school, okay, in, here in Menlo Park. So we are very much, you know, we are down to earth. Uh, we are running this like a startup company. You know, there is a shot, you know, very narrowed scope pilot because, you know, sky is the limit for it. You know, if you really look at the international effect of it, you know, Africa, India, emerging economies, they have a huge benefit out of that. But we are very much heads down, focusing on California pilot. The problem with your message, and this is just a general feedback on what I'm feeling right now, is that most of the school teachers, they just want a book and they want to teach. They are not authors. They don't consider themselves authors. They don't consider themselves subject matter experts to even assemble something that they can say this is the best compilation I can think of. And so they would want somebody like the names that you mentioned that, that authored the physics book, they want to pick names from a list and say, I want to yes. pick this. So you, you're going to have to invite major authors to author on your system so that people can just get things yeah, off it, the shelf. It, to be fair, there's how many books being done today? 
there are 17 books. 17 books in process already. 17 new original books. Okay. okay, 17 new original books. I suspect a school district might decide to save money. Here's, here's a textbook we compile for our school district. But what the teacher will the, do is say, I don't like the way this diagram is drawn. I'll draw it a little differently, and one out of 40 teachers will improve the diagram and then submit it. And now it's permanently part of repository that everybody can use. So there's a, there's a better way. I don't like this paragraph. I'll rewrite this paragraph and submit it. And, you know, you, only a few percent of the teachers need to do that for the books to get better and better and have the best explanations are two different ways of explaining the same thing. And that's where open source really matters. So these are pre-endorsed -sta pre standard books, as it is. You do not have to touch anything. For example, you know, this particular book is, you know, is the book, engineering book for high school. It's ready to print. It's already there. So you know, th there are pre-cut books also available. It doesn't mean that you have to always create something custom. Okay? And we predict almost like 95% of the people will use the pre-cut books. You are absolutely right. Because the other, other you are using are more engineering oriented terminologies like versioning or branching. And being a CM person, I can see, you know, hey, these guys have versioning and branching, but uh, I, don't, I don't think if I go to my daughter's teacher, she'll say, what are you talking about? People don't go to a bookstore and say, hey, give me the Saratoga High branch of physics book, you know? They don't talk like that. So, you might have to do a little bit of different... Um, no, but, the, but, but a teacher will say, here's the six chapters I want to teach. Yes. I don't need to buy, put all 42 chapters. Yeah, yeah. They will do that. Yeah. And then say, hey, instead of spending $80, we can get it for $8. Let me just print these four chapters. Sure, sure. Right? That's all you expect from 95% of the people. And some may not even do that. The school district may say, here's what we'll do. Yeah. Right? And a few will get more involved and in, in enhance the content over time. See, the second half we went into technical details mainly because it's a tech talk, okay? But for teachers, everything is transparent. They do not deal with the second half of the thing at all. They come here, drag and drop, print their book, done. Search, assemble, print. That's all they need to know. So there's no cost to teachers? There's no cost to users of this? Or is that just for the initial prototype? No, all no, there will be no cost other than whatever the cost of printing is if you want to print. But if you want to print it at home, no cost because it's all PDF. How do the authors get compensated or how do the people providing content? So, okay, let's talk about right, the James Dan book or the other book that you would see, you know, they're all, even before we existed, these people have written their books and then they already put it for open source. Okay, there are plenty of materials that are available. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it, in order to showcase the engineering book is something that we have seeded. So we from CK12, apart from, as I said, the tenets of the CK12 right now, half the, half the investment or the, the, the foundation operations goes into technology, half the operations goes into content creation and editing process. In fact, we have actually you know, mimicked the process of the quality vetting with you know, 40 different reviewers and editors and authors working across the country in, in a very you know, a virtual, virtually networked way to vet out these books. So we pay for that. So 50% of the op our operations cost goes into content creation right now. But in a longer term, in, during the equilibrium condition, we believe that you know, somebody can only offer that particular step and that becomes like an open source thing, right? Nowadays, who do, does QA for open source Linux? It's one step at a time. So I think one way to look at this is you will have a base set of books that are available for free, and the content is uh, open source content, Creative Commons, share alike, that they will, in fact, probably be reviewed more than a book from Prentice Hall will be reviewed by experts, multiple experts, who want to help this process. So there will be a, probably a higher level of review than a Prentice Hall ninth grade math textbook might have. And that's just the starting point. And then a few of the teachers who use them will keep improving them. A better diagram, a better explanation, a better illustration. A lot, a, you know, if you're explaining the planetary system, a link that takes you to a real model of an array so you can see it online 
far better than a little thing showing the, uh, the sun and the planets rotating around it statically. So that's where this thing will get substantially better. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about standards and standards management and how you'll, you can help teachers ensure that their textbooks they're assembling meet the state standards? The curriculum standards, yes. right. So yeah, actually, you know, that is also very, very transparent. It's, it's the underneath the substrata. Oh, we don't, you know, she's more qualified to answer that question. Um, so what we are trying to also do underneath is that working with, you know, certain organizations in the country, which works across, you know, all the 50 different states, and then they have devised, you know, certain, you know, uh, uh, database. So we are planning to leverage that. So somebody comes and says, you know, our, our dream is like this, okay, and it's very much possible and very much doable. It's a matter of time in another six months or something like that. So what we want is that somebody comes and says, CA space, seven space, you know, math. That's it. So we should automatically either should have, you know, inlined the California math curriculum into our system, broken down into, you know, coordinates, and map the contents according to that, and then, you know, uh, generate the book. That's one possibility. The other possibility is also, you know, in a wiki way, you know, you guys know conference. You guys should also know unconference, right? Unconference is that you decide your own conference session on the fly. Likewise, you know, some of the advanced teachers, when we did the focus group study, literally, you know, 15% of the teachers wants to be on the advanced path. Whether it's a public school, private school, charter school, doesn't matter, they have extra time. The 85% of the teachers, they are overwhelmed with their current duties. But these 15% of the teachers can help also, you know, hone down the standards base, right? So, but assessment, we are not touching it, and it's beyond our scope at this moment, but standards is, is part of the game, yes. Yes, the, the whole social networking part yeah. of it, right? In fact, there will be, it's like California third grade. Right. And then advanced for yeah. third grade. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so it, it's think of it as a large repository of content than a number of filters that can be applied to make it relatively simple. I mean, there's no reason showing a California third grade teacher content that's approved in India, for example. Right? So they get what's relevant for their filter. And also it's contextual, right? See, for example, let's talk about if a ninth grade teacher's profile was a seventh grade teacher's profile, and assume that both of them are going to search for simultaneous equations, what would you bring in? For a seventh grade teacher, you want to bring in simultaneous equation solutions through substitution, whereas for a ninth grade teacher, you want to bring in simultaneous equation solutions through matrices, right? So contextual you know, information is also very important. And, and it's worth commenting on the international aspects. You know, suddenly the quality of s textbooks for Latin America gets much better because somebody has then translated this in that language. And we've seen that phenomena on Wikipedia endlessly because nobody wants to do content for, uh, for areas where there aren't large markets. In fact, one thing's connections discovered is the signal processing textbook is actually now available in Spanish when no signal processing textbook was available for, for a Brazilian engineering school before. And that's the other power when you start to look at its worldwide reach. And imagine sort of teaching elementary K through 12 in Africa. Right? There aren't enough textbooks customized and still keep the high quality of content. See, not only that, you can also say, here is you know, the left-hand pages are in English medium. The right-hand page can be in your bilingual, your mother tongue. So assume that you are talking about dispersion, right, or a, ref a refraction or reflection. You can actually talk about rainbow in Spanish language while the dispersion is being... So page by page, you can have very good examples. I, th I think definitely one of the other advantages is uh, the environmental impact. Because I remember when I was at college, you know, we had these textbooks. Yeah. You end up using maybe... 50% of the exactly. If that. And then, if that, right? And then, so. So, it, um, you mentioned the need for resources and engineering. Um, uh, what, are, what are some of the other areas? It seems like there might be a long tail out there, just content development. Well, yeah. Long tail of content, long tail, tail of reviewers, people who, who are qualified to participate mm -hmm. at different levels. Uh, you want to talk? That's, that's, pre that's pretty correct, actually. That's, 
We, we need workers, basically, <laughs> at every level. Technology volunteers. as well as content. Workers, volunteers, it's the same thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, already we have about 15 people working, but then we have another 50 people who have, you know, joined us remotely from di different parts of the world. And we have, you know, volunteers too. One couple of people from Canada. Uh, we have two developers in Scotland. So, you know, I, I think we, we should be able to get some help from people around us here. That would be absolutely fabulous if we can get people. If you're on sabbatical and you want to take some time off and come do something different, uh, we would love for you to come and join us. I mean, I, I think, you know, if you can do that kind of volunteer work. If, you know, if you know teachers, one of the things that hasn't been mentioned here about teachers is um, people talk about the textbook issue that, you know, they want textbooks. But uh, on the other hand, there are a large majority of teachers that find textbooks absolutely useless. What they do is the state tells them, buy these textbooks, they get them, put them in the cupboard, lock the cupboard, and teach from their own material. That's happening in a lot of the classrooms. It's the, 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 it's the teachers that are new, one to three-year-old teachers that actually need help and need textbooks. A lot of teachers who are with struggling districts need textbooks. They need lesson plans. They need very concrete ha uh, material and lesson plans on what to teach and how to teach. But the seasoned teacher says, I don't need help. I, I know what I want to teach. I know what works with students. So those kind of teachers are really what we are wanting to tap into. And there are quite a few in the, in the focus groups that we did. I would say about 20% of the teachers that came for those focus groups said, we want to help. We have our own material. When can we put it across? One teacher was so antsy. We are focused on STEM courses right now. We're not going into uh, STEM uh, is uh, science, math, engineering, and technology for K through 12. Uh, other, other disciplines we're not going into yet because, you know, um, history. What history are we going to teach? You know, do we teach local history or do we teach extended history? So we've kind of stayed away from those uh, other domains yet. But if you know teachers who might be able to contribute and help us, encourage. So if, if Google has a teacher, like Yahoo has a teacher network, so maybe I don't know if Google has a teacher's network. Do you know anything? So maybe even one day, well, you were a teacher, maybe you can help. Mm -hmm. So. That's Thank you. I think this is great. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you.